Here's our 1883 Chickering. This piano was in Chicopee its entire life. I was told by the owner when I removed it a couple days ago in the year 2023 that it was put into that house in 1884 and it spent its whole life there. So I was the second person to ever move it. It seems to be shockingly original and well kept. And the serial number says it's in 1883. Chickering. Uh, one unique thing about this is the metal action inside. How many years did they make that for? Not too many, six or seven. I, I don't think too many. It's just so original. Usually not in this good condition. Somebody put something on this leg at some point. You can see that spalted Brazilian rosewood. It's a little bleached on this side cute little feature of these old ones was they tried to blend the music desk in with the features so one button slides that way button slides that way and then this comes out and folds like that and there's a nice solid music desk large enough for you know, an open book but yeah, this is definitely the era of rosewood. Rosewood, rosewood. Um, Uprights really only got started in America in the late 1860s, early 1870s, so... This is really kind of early for that, but... It is an incredibly advanced instrument when you look at the insides and how they progressed with the plate and uh, all the raw engineering. It is a beast in a box for its day. Would you say this is about 600 pounds? Uh, Possibly yeah. more? Yeah, I'd say six is a good number. It's a very heavy, small piano. A little hard to see. Yeah. Got exquisite rosewood on this side. The other side was next to a window, that's why it's bleached a little yellow. It's just a shocking time capsule, near perfect condition from what we're used to. So we can take a look inside here in a second. We'll take all these boards off here, see what's going on internally. I think these are loose. Take out screws to go any further. But yeah, this is the the fabled chickering. Metal action. I I saw a few pieces of this thing. 35 years ago and this is the first time we've come across a, fur, a full full example
Yeah, this has uh, got a few things to it that your average upright wouldn't have. I've never seen the uh, the back check actually separately mounted in an upright. It's using what uh, this front rail is a length of uh, of whipping, I guess, because the jack is also mounted to it. Yeah, this action's got to come out for, a, for an on-the-table display. This is something else. You know, like, it, it seems, you know, a little bit Jules Verne over the top. But one of the th aspects of uprights is that unlike a grand, um, the hammer and stuff doesn't really reflect back in the key very much. So you could, you know, you can have heavy stuff out there and it doesn't weigh down the key quite as much. And the extra mass in this action might give this thing in good condition a uh, kind of toothsome touch, you know, it doesn't, won't feel fly away. But I can see why these would also fall by the wayside, because I can't imagine too many technicians who would have what it takes to tackle, tackle this if you get a broken shank, as it were. But yeah, this is a... You must have, you must have yelled for Eureka when you first thought this up. And only chickering would go through with it. Take a look under here. This one has a lot. Okay, let's get this out. This is, this is the real um, revolutionary technology in this piano. This casting is just massive. And for an upright, they just simply weren't built this robust prior to this. And this thing's got a full perimeter plate on it. it looks to be half an inch thick there. Maybe oh, more. God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of this is. I mean, that's that thick. That's front to back. And is it overkill? Well, it's certainly rigid, and it certainly won't rack or twist. It'll keep the box straight. So, the hitches for the strings go under the piano. Oh. Down there. Really? You can see them. Oh, I the see bottom. them going down to here. Yep. Okay, they go down to the right to the edge. Oh, isn't that making the most out of here? Out of length you have to work with. That's amazing. I think the mass also helps in that on a grand piano you're shaking the soundboard and it wants to go up and down because the strings go this way and the shake goes this way. On this, the strings go this way and the shake goes this way and, well, it's got nothing to shake against except the mass of the instrument. And this 
creates an inertial base for the whole system that uh, I think in its original days added to its tonal values. Yeah, it's a full, it's a full plate, it's a full plate. It looks like a, it's styled to look like a three-quarter plate, but it's not. It's a full one-piece cast iron plate. But all in all, maybe rebushing and it'd be ready, it'd be good to go. At least the action would. Ooh. Okay. Put it together and put it in the corner, and there it will wait for something to be done to it. Yeah. Put it in the corner, throw a blanket over it. And this piano was picked up for free. The owner was very close to destroying it and throwing it in the dumpster. So we went and we got it with thoughts of turning it into a guitar. But this one might be just special enough to keep as a piano. We'll see where it ends up.